Wow, did you see that? No, you didn't see that because it's happening over there. But about 200 plus geese took off. Good morning. I'm out in my local area with my usual setup of uh, XT3 and the 70 to 300 because there's a lot of geese flying around at the moment. But I'm not here to talk about geese. I'm here to talk about my brand new toy. And here it is. Yes. At last, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro. Yeah. And there we are. See the three lenses. There's certainly been a quantum leap in camera technology between my old iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 14 Pro over the last seven years. Took a night shot this morning. And completely cocked it up. At least two stops overexposed on auto. Had I reduced exposure for another take, I would have had the moon with some texture and without looking like the sun. Dull. So this is the first upgrade of an iPhone I've had since uh, the 7 Plus which I had for nearly seven years. And so my wife eventually gave in and agreed, yes, well, she's got a newer phone than me as well. So uh, <laughs> I needed something better for photography. I don't care for the fact that it can make phone calls with it. I was seduced by it, yeah. The software, apart from the lenses, the software is fantastic now. But I'm shooting in RAW and I will be shooting in RAW probably 99% of the time because the RAW files are really, really nice and of course, the magic 48 megapixel. Now that's one of the prime reasons I bought the phone. I was going to hang around, wait until uh, the iPhone 15 Pro came out. I'd probably die before I got a new phone. So, you know. <laughs> anyway, the 7 Plus did a good job over the years, but this is in a different league altogether, completely different league, yeah. So let's look at the settings I already have in place. Video settings, by the way, we'll leave because that's a subject of a future video. With the green light set on, it means that every time you take a photograph, it won't revert back to a default setting. Mirror front camera accentuates my broken nose, so that's off. View outside the frame may be useful, but not needed right now. Lens correction reduces distortion on front and ultra-wide lenses, but my face is distorted enough already, thanks. Macro is good to have on, because as you bring the phone closer, it will automatically switch to the wide lens for really close-in shots. Touching on formats allows high efficiency or most compatible to be set. HIEF saves space, but most compatible produces a JPEG. Touch Pro Raw Res to switch between 48 megapixel and 12 megapixel capture. Then back to 48 megapixel for the serious stuff. Apple Pro Raw outputs as a DNG file in Photoshop Raw or in Lightroom, which is my first choice. 48 megapixel is only available with the one times lens. As soon as you switch lenses to 0.5, 2 times, or 3 times, and plus the use of night mode, macro mode, or flash, the format reverts to 12 megapixel. So there are several limitations with 48 megapixel capture, unfortunately. Raw shooting will always give you the most flexibility when editing and avoid that over sharpened look that camera process JPEGs tend to be infamous for. Photographic styles not shown, as I prefer to tweak colours and contrast in post. Preserve settings, which I've given the green light, preserves the last mode or adjustments after each shot, rather than automatically resetting. 48 megapixel shooting will rapidly fill up memory, so realising this, I bought the 256GB phone. Would have liked a 1TB, but pff, that cost shed loads. Here's a comparison chart, showing the original photograph with the different resolutions. 12 megapixel in JPEG, 12 megapixel RAW, and 48 megapixel RAW. The data is half what it might have been due to the amount of blank space around the loco. Shooting in 48 megapixel RAW will often produce an average file size of around 80 gigabyte. But as seen, the more detail in your subject, the more data is accrued. Here's a visual benefit of shooting in RAW. I expose more for the sky. This underexposed the foreground, but then in Lightroom, I opened up the shadows. And here's the result. Right, let's skim through the 14 Pro's camera settings. We'll start with macro. 0.5 times, 1 times, 2 times, and 3 times. 0.5 times is the default lens as you track in, but all focal lengths can actually be used down to about 1 inch from the lens. Very impressive. Notice the yellow flower denoting macro mode. Swipe right as we start with time lapse, which with 1 minute of action is roughly crunched down to just 3 seconds. But for time lapse, I'd recommend using the Lapse It app. It's far superior and gives you much more versatility. Slow motion can be captured at 120 frames per second in 1080p and up to 240 frames per second at 720p. I'd stay with 120 personally and speed it up or slow it down in post. 
We'll skip through cinematic mode. It's the first of two video modes and I'll review in a forthcoming video. Photo mode, of course, is the subject of this video. Portrait mode. OK, you can have fun with this, with several lighting effects to play with. To open the aperture control, touch the F symbol. AI now simulates depth of field as you scroll up and down. But I'd say F5.6 gives a more natural look, without the artifacts at the wider apertures. Depth of field will be more apparent with front cam mug shots of moi. Front camera mug shots with depth of field and lighting effects applied. Unable to find a willing model, I decide to use a dummy. Er, uh, not me this time. <laughs> Having touched the f-stop symbol, adjust the desired depth of field from f1.4 to f16. 4.5 to 5.6 will give a more natural look with sufficient background blur. Lastly, panorama. You can pan left or right. Following the yellow brick, following the yellow line. So at last, here's a few 48 megapixel and 12 megapixel comparisons. The red boat in a large canvas was shot at 12 megapixel and then 48 and cropped. It's clear to see the over sharpened JPEG in the 12 megapixel. These are both straight from the phone with no enhancements and cropped in Photoshop. This was shot from a bedroom window with the 48 megapixel 24 millimeter lens as a DNG RAW file then cropped in at 200%. Quite impressive, eh? One in one times lens you can crop from 4x3 to 69. A 48 megapixel JPEG is produced, not raw, but high quality nonetheless. Taken this morning at minus 6 degrees with one time lens 48 megapixel capture in raw. Viewed here as a crunched down JPEG. Bonus time, bonus time, bonus time, guys. If you have an Apple Watch, then you can use it to take photos remotely and also as a monitor. With the watch, touch on remote camera and either front or rear camera can be set. A three second timed exposure, you can shoot video, stop start. Fantastic, brilliant. I will produce a video on how best to use this feature at a future date. So I'd say, shoot in RAW with your iPhone, use the one times lens at four by three standard ratio, and shoot away, but with one caveat. Unless you download those large raw DNG files, averaging 80 odd megabytes per file, potentially a 256 gigabyte phone could just about hold 300 images before freezing up. But no, you wouldn't do that. You would shoot a lot of 12 megapixel JPEGs too, no doubt. And I haven't even mentioned video, so <laughs> in reality, you probably wouldn't. So download your images and back up, back up, back up, is the mantra. Ding the bell for notifications and please subscribe. Cheers! Cheers.